Google Maps says three hours, but trust me, it's probably gonna take you about four hours because man, those views are just beautiful. Welcome to the South Island, New Zealand. Behind me is Lake Takapo, and this is gonna be the starting point of your 10 day itinerary. So let's go. Today we're talking about a 10 day road trip around South Island, New Zealand. Now this can be done either clockwise or anti-clockwise, but in my opinion, doing it clockwise, the views just get so much better. But you do get those long distance drives out of the way if you do it anti-clockwise. But the views every turn you make, it's just incredible. It doesn't matter which way you go because you are always gonna be surprised and amazed by these, by the views that just came in out. I keep, I keep saying amazed because it is, it is just so amazing. Now just take note, you're gonna be driving around 2,000 kilometers on this road trip. So remember to take plenty of rests, plenty of stops, and make sure that petrol tank is full because you're going from one, from one destination to the next, you are not gonna see a petrol station within miles. So make sure you've got a full tank. I'd also just like to apologize in advance because I might mispronounce some of these town names. Um, I'm gonna do my best, um, but again, sorry to, sorry to any Kiwis that are watching this and are probably gonna be screaming at me with the proper pronunciation, so uh, sorry. So we're landing into Christchurch, but we're not gonna be hanging around. Don't worry, we will be making our way back there at the end. We're gonna jump straight into our hire car and we're going straight to Lake Takapo and it's gonna take you roughly three hours to drive there. Depending if you landed early, you're gonna get to Lake Takapo around about midday. When you get there, just take in the scenery, take a moment that you are in the South Island, New Zealand. You can keep this first day chilled. Take a walk around Lake Takapo itself, or head over to the Good Shepherd Church, built for the glory of God, and as a memorial to the pioneers of the district. The nighttime gets better. Now this depends on the weather, of course. Lake Takapo is part of the Eoraki Mackenzie International Dark Sky Reserve. Now this is one of eight in the whole world. And when it gets dark, the nighttime sky comes alive with millions of stars and even the glimpse of the galaxy. Head up to the summit of Mount John, where you can take a look through one of the many telescopes up there at the Mount John Observatory. On the second day, we're gonna wake up early, grab a coffee and catch a glimpse of the sunrise coming over the Good Shepherd Church. Head on over to the Lake Takapo Hot Pools car park and if you didn't get up there last night, we're going up to the summit of Mount John today. Take the easy route, it's not too tiring, it's gonna take you roughly an hour to get up there. When you get to the top, you're gonna to see a different view of Lake Takapo itself and the village of where you just came from. And if you feel like you can't walk this trail, there is a car park at the very top where you can still take in those amazing views, it gets you to the same place. Now providing you left your car in the Hot Pools car park, just leave it there, grab your bag, grab your bathing kit, and you're going straight into the hot pools because two days in, you need to relax in hot pools. Like two days of traveling is just way too much, has, has to be done. Sit back, relax in the hot pools with an amazing view of Lake Takapo and the mountains behind it. But if relaxing in the pools isn't your thing, or if you do want to spend a couple more hours there, then they do have an ice rink and they do have a snow tube park as well, which definitely looked like something I wanted to do, but I did have to get going to my next destination. And that next stop is gonna be Mount Cook Village in Aoraki. Now this is supposed to take an hour and a half, but you are gonna be driving past Lake Pukaki. Now you're gonna be spending about 42 kilometers of this road with this beautiful blue lake on your right hand side. This is Lake Pukaki and what a stunning view. It's probably gonna take you about two and a half hours rather than an hour and a half, just bear that in mind. This lake is huge, so I can tell I'm gonna be stopping a lot before I even get check in to my hostel. That looks amazing. Scenic stop number two, Lake Pukaki. Scenic stop number three. Now when we get to Mount Cook Village, because that depends on how much more time we spent in Lake Takapo than what we wanted to and how many times we stopped at Lake Pukaki, um, there's probably not a lot you are gonna wanna do. Uh, but again, they do have the stargaze in itself because once again, there is very little to none light pollution and they do run some stargazing tours as well. So definitely check that out. Day three, we're waking up early again and we're gonna be taking a fairly easy walk up the Tasman Glacier Trail. Welcome to the Blue Lakes. Why is it green? There's three separate trails on this walk and I'll definitely recommend taking the time to do all three. It will take you roughly two hours to do all of them, but it will give you a different perspective and different views of Mount Cook itself, Tasman Lake and the glacier and the icebergs, which you can go right down to and touch. Once we finished in Mount Cook Village, we're gonna be taking the two and a half hour drive over to Wanaka, where this is gonna be the first lively city you're gonna come across. Day four is a do what you want day. This is the first time you're gonna be waking up and then going to sleep in the same bed without worrying about traveling anywhere. 
If we're still craving those adventures, then take a walk up the 240 meter summit of Mount Iron. This is gonna take you roughly an hour and a half and you're gonna get 360 degree panoramic views of Lake Wanaka and Lake, Lake Hawaii, Hawaii. Lake, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write it down there. It's the summit of Mount Iron. It's a little cold, it's breezy, but who cares when you have these kind of views. Spectacular. If you do want to stay at ground level, definitely check out the skate park. Even if you don't skate, you'll see some awesome moves right there. Or you can take a small stroll around the corner of Lake Wanaka. And if you are an aspiring photographer, then you've probably heard about it. Hashtag that Wanaka tree. Yep, I'm serious. That's what it's called. Google it. Day five is for the skiers and the snowboarders because we're going to Ski Gadrona. This ski resort is for everybody. If you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, or extreme exports, there is everything for everybody. If you want to spend the whole day there, then grab yourself a full day day pass. Otherwise, if you've got somewhere to be in the afternoon, grab yourself a half day day pass where you can use this in the morning or vice versa in the afternoon. And you don't have to worry about overpacking for this trip because they have every single item for hire. That's skis, snowboards, ski jackets, salopettes, hats, gloves and helmets, they have it all. So you don't have to worry about the weight of your bag. So after a full day of skiing, we're going to step back in time at the Cadrona Hotel. This place was opened in the late 1800s and it looks like it hasn't been renovated since the day it opened. Sit back with a drink before we continue our three hour drive to Teanau where we're going to get some rest, recharge our batteries, grab a meal in a local restaurant because we're waking up early for day six, Milford Sounds. Allow yourself three hours drive to get to Milford Sounds and make sure you have a full tank of petrol because the next petrol station isn't until you actually get there itself. And if you're driving in the winter, definitely take snow chains with you. Try to get an early booking, if not the first, because there's not going to be many tourists around and the water's going to be still, it's going to be untouched, which will make for a perfect Instagram photo with the mountains and the reflection of them in the water itself. When you hop off the boat, grab some snacks because we're taking a four hour drive to the adventure capital of New Zealand, Queenstown. When you get there, there's no rest for the wicked. Let your hair loose and if you're into that scene, there is no shortage of clubs in the area. You are going to be dancing till about three o'clock in the morning. Definitely do not get accommodation in the center above a club if it's not your scene. Day seven, we're going to stick around Queenstown and we're going to be real tourists. If you want to do another day of skiing or snowboarding, then the closest resort is Cornet Peak, which is approximately 20 minutes drive away from Queenstown. If you want to stay in the local area, how about some shopping down the pedestrian friendly Queenstown Mall, pick up a souvenir, or once again, keep that adrenaline pumping with some zip line in that zip trek, and then finish off the day watching the sunset overlooking Lake Wakatipu. Day eight, and it's time to leave the adventure field Queenstown, but first of all, we're going to take a drive up to Glenorchy. It'll take you a roughly 45 minute drive to get up to Glenorchy, but when you get there, take the very easy walking trail, the Glenorchy Lagoon, and try to keep your eyes open to see how many species of birds you can see. Now get ready for the long haul because this is where the driving gets a little bit intense. We're leaving Glenorchy and we're going straight to Glacier Territory, Franz Joseph. But don't start coming up with car games because this next five hour journey is going to be boring. Trust me, it's not. You're going to be driving through the largest area of protected land in New Zealand and the views just keep getting better and better. There are plenty of stop-offs on the drive to Franz Joseph, but my number one recommended stop-off is Shipwreck in Haast, where you get both the view of the sea and the forest, where it literally feels like you are shipwrecked on a paradise island that nobody has touched before. Day nine is pretty much the last full day of your 10 day epic road trip, so you definitely wanna make the most of it. Head up to the foot of Franz Joseph Glacier, but just be careful of walking this trail as there is no protection from the extremes. Take sunscreen in the height of the summer or a rain jacket if it's pouring down with rain because there is no cover above you at all. You are gonna be walking up to an hour there and back on the path that the glacier once stood on. But if you don't fancy the walk, there are a couple of helicopter companies that will take you right above Franz Joseph Glacier itself. From Franz Joseph, unfortunately it's on our way back to Christchurch where we're gonna be getting a flight back the following day. But do not forget to stop off in Arthur's Path or anywhere that will get you that last look of New Zealand South Island. But just be careful of the New Zealand Alpine Parrot, AKA Kia. They look friendly and very majestic to look at, but they will start picking at your car. The rubber bits on your door, the wing mirrors on the side, but it's not gonna look good on your car hire insurance. These guys are brutal. Kind of don't wanna open the door in case they jump in. Literally never been so scared of birds before. That was actually weird. By the time we get to Christchurch, it's probably gonna be dark by now. So head over to the lively side, grab some food, grab a drink, make some new friends, 
and reflect on the good times that you've had in the South Island New Zealand. Day 10 and we can keep pushing those activities to the very last minute depending on what time that flight is from Christchurch International. Explore the city, find a quirky coffee shop for that morning caffeine intake and take a walk down the colourful New Regent Street. And if you've got one more walk in you, head over to Victoria Park where you can overlook Littleton Harbour. Now remember there is plenty to do in the South Island and this is just my version of an epic 10 day road trip around the South Island New Zealand. But I hope I've inspired you to get out there and create your own road trip around the South Island New Zealand. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up and I'm going to be making more videos like this so definitely hit that subscribe button if you're interested and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.